Thank you everyone for coming. My name is Paul Grondahl. I'm the president of the Manatee County Bar Association. Um, we have a very, very special day today to honor and pay tribute to uh, Judge Wallace. I'm, I'm sure most of us would be extremely happy to see even a quarter of the number of people that are here today as we someday celebrate our own retirements. It speaks to how fond everyone is of, of his honor. Um, First of all, would everyone please stand for Troop 22's color guard to present the colors. With us today are Scouts Christopher Jenwick and Charlie Landers. Judge Wallace, would you and your two grandsons, Evan Reed and Stone Wallace, please come forward to join me in leading the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Stone. Please be seated. Thank you. We would like to uh, first thank our sponsors um, who have been instrumental in providing um, support for all of our programs, including our lunches. Fidelity Bank with us today are Jeff Baker. I'd like these gentlemen to stand. <clears throat> Alan Murphy and Jacob Macias. Uh, these. These folks are from Fidelity, and we, we thank uh, them for everything that they do for us. LexisNexis is also one of our sponsors, and, and we thank them as well. I'd also like to thank Charles Clapsaddle. He's from METV. He's a gentleman over there with the headphones, and he, he doesn't get half as much credit as he should for, for helping us televise uh, many of our programs and lunches. Thank you, Charles. Uh, again, we have a very special program today. Manatee County's own Judge Wallace, Doug Wallace, is retiring from the Second District Court of Appeal. And with the help of many judges who we are happy to see visiting from the Second DCA, our program today is to honor Judge Wallace for his service on the bench. Uh, we're so happy to see so many smiling faces and relatives and, and friends with us here today. We first of all have a few announcements that we'll get through. We're going to run right through our, our, our lunch and we have matters of association business. I'm first going to call up to the podium uh, Alex St. Paul is going to talk a little bit about continuing legal education that we're going to be providing this year. Alex? Thanks. Hi. We have a seminar on Friday, November 3rd. For $25, you get two ethics credits and lunch. It's in the jury holding room. It's on probate and guardianship. We hope you attend. Um, that's it. I'm short. Alex is short. She's not short on hard work. We have a fantastic lineup of program speakers the remainder of this year, and Alex has been responsible, solely responsible, along with the help of Judge Smith, uh, for setting up that fantastic lineup. Uh, next, Lori Dorman. I'd like you to come up for a minute, Lori. Thanks. So on your table, um, you'll find a flyer. It's about the Freedom Riders. This is part of the Dan Boxer Diversity Initiative at New College of Florida. And on November 16th, we are so fortunate that we're going to be able to participate um, with the Sarasota County Bar and the Diversity Initiative for the Freedom Riders, the relevancy today. And the question is, will you get, would you get on the bus? Um, 
I hope that you all can attend. There's information on the flyer. We'll be sending out more information to all of you um, with next month's inter alia. In the meantime, the Diversity Committee has its first meeting of this term. It's next Tuesday. What date is that? October 3rd, I believe. And it's going to be downstairs across from the law library in the meeting room at lunch, noon. Um, if anyone's interested in becoming a part of the Manatee County Bar's Diversity Committee or the Young Lawyers uh, Diversity Committee, please come next Tuesday at noon. Thanks. Thank you, Lori. Next, Brian E. Swift, would you come up and deliver the Young Lawyers Division hot minute or two? One minute. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Brian e. Swift from Porges Hamlin with the Young Lawyers Hot Minute. Our next event will be on Friday, the 13th of October. It is a social, it is a wine tasting and haunted winery tour at the Bunker Hill Winery in Parrish. Um, the evening begin, will begin with hors d'oeuvres and a wine tasting, followed by a guided tour of the haunted grounds of the winery. The owners of this place genuinely believe that it's haunted. On your table is a flyer with a link to their ghost story. If you're interested in attending this event, please RSVP to Grace Ann. And again, that is Friday the 13th of October. Thank you. Thank you, Bryony. Uh, only other announcement, I can't believe it's Christmas time already. Our holiday party is on Thursday, September 1. And so uh, please make a note uh, to save that date for our, what did I say? It's a little early. Uh, Thursday, December 1 is our holiday party. Friday? <laughs> Apparently, I'm not going to be there. Okay. All right. Uh, would, I'm, I'm not going to introduce all of our judges and elected officials, but if y'all would just stand up uh, very briefly to be recognized, our local circuit judges. Thank you for being uh, with us here today. I have the privilege of now introducing Judge Robert Morris from the Second District Court of Appeal, and he is going to say a few words about Judge Wallace, but first introduce some of the other judges from the, the Second District. I have with me the list of whom I've been told is here today, and lists are always tricky because some people say they're coming and don't, and some people don't tell us they're coming and they do. So when I'm through with my list, if I've missed you, don't be bashful, stand up and help me with this. So um, among our current judges on the Second District Court of Appeal, we have a really amazing turnout. Uh, we have Chief Judge Ed LaRose. <clears throat> Judge Stephen Northcutt, our senior most member of the court and the dean of our court. <clears throat> Judge Daryl Casanueva, a Manatee County resident. <clears throat> Judge Morris Silverman. <clears throat> Judge Nelly Kuzam. <clears throat> Judge Anthony Black. <clears throat> Judge Daniel Sleet. <clears throat> Judge Matthew Lucas. Judge Samuel Solerio, <laughs> Judge John Badalamente, <laughs> and last and never least, Judge Susan Rostin Yorkum, who is a Sarasota County resident. <clears throat> Did I miss anybody of our current judges? Okay. Retired judges. These are the tricky ones. We had a couple of shows that didn't, I didn't know were coming, but I think I got the list right. Judge Carolyn Fulmer. <clears throat> Judge E.J. Salcinas. <clears throat> Judge Thomas Stringer. <clears throat> Judge Chris Altenburn. <clears throat> or I can't call you a judge anymore, can I? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I miss anybody? All right. Court officers. They're here, too. Our clerk of court, Mary Beth Kunzel. Our Marshal, Joe Haynes. 
And we have a couple of members, current and former members of Judge Wallace's staff. Sherry Johannes. Robin Orr, Joe Tompkins, Diana Evans, Stephanie Zimmerman, and Jerry Thomas. Did I miss anybody? Hi. <laughs> You're going to tell us who you are? <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Judge Wallace, you want to introduce your family? Who's here with you? Sure. Yeah, why don't you do that for us? Why don't you come over here and, and just tell us who's here? Uh, to my the immediate left in my chair is my brother Don Wallace, who's always ready to lend a hand. <laughs> my daughter. Uh, Rachel Reed, her husband Sam Motes, who's a welcome addition to our family, my son Paul Wallace, his wife Drew Wallace, and their son Stone Wallace, my grandson. And my other grandson, Evan Reed. And again, last but never least, my wife of 48 years, Marsha Wallace. Thank you. Just a few words about Judge Wallace, and then I'm going to sit down and enjoy the rest of the program. Judge Wallace was appointed to our court by Governor Jeb Bush on June the 9th of 2003. He has served on our court for over 14 years. Before judicial service, he practiced law right here in Bradenton for over 30 years, beginning right after he graduated from law school in 1972. He's been a member of this Bar Association his entire career. And in fact, he served two terms as a secretary. When he joined our court, he brought a wealth of practice experience with him. He has been our go-to person in a variety of substantive areas, most notably probate and bankruptcy, but many others. He also is our go-to person for thoughtful wisdom when a situation requires it. And those of you who know Doug Wallace know exactly what I just meant by that. Although he was born in Miami, he spent pretty much his entire life here. He's a product of the Manatee County Schools. He graduated from Manatee High School, where he, wet, where he met his wife, Marcia. Judge Wallace is a Phi Beta Kappa from Princeton, where he received a BA summa cum laude. And following that, he attended the Yale Law School, where he received a Juris Doctor. Hillary Rodham Clinton was in his very small study group at the Yale Law School. Had the recent presidential election been decided differently, perhaps Judge Wallace might have gotten a different job instead of Neil Gorsuch. <laughs> you never know. To be sure, I know firsthand, and so do my colleagues, he's a brilliant legal scholar. He's an incredible writer. His style is unmistakable, and those of you who have read his opinions, you know what I mean. You know a Wallace opinion when you read one. They're thorough, meticulous, with extraordinary clarity. His opinions are a very good read, and never leave the reader in doubt about the point he set out to make. But what's best about Judge Wallace, as brilliant as he is, he's humble. He's kind, he's courteous, he's laid back, he's easygoing, has a very quick wit and a great sense of humor. His devotion to the law is limitless. His work ethic is tireless. By his habits, he has pushed our entire court the entire 14 years he's been there. 
He's made all of us better by it. He's a great colleague, and although he's approaching the tender age of 70, he has a lot of gas left in his tank. There's a lot of miles left on his warranty. He is nowhere near done. And although none of us is irreplaceable, Judge Wallace will be extremely difficult to replace because his kind only comes along ever so often. We will miss you, Doug, and thank you very much for all you did for our court and the people of this district. Enjoy this day. <laughs> Thank you very much, Judge Morris, for being here and for uh, speaking about Judge Wallace. Would Larry Thomas please now join me at the podium? Good afternoon. Judge Morris filled in a lot of space for me, so I'm going to cut to the chase here. Judge Wallace, and Judge, you're going to have to forgive me before I even get started because I've known you so long, I'm probably going to call you Doug. But Ju Judge Wallace and I go back quite a ways. Um, I met him because he w and my sister were classmates, and I was a young man. And you all can remember that when you have little guys around, they're always peddling with you and in your way. But something that st stuck out with Judge Wallace always, he wasn't like the other boys that would chase me off. He was always a consummate gentleman, and he was friendly. Now, we have some scouts here this afternoon, and I want to tell you some of the traits of a scout. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, reverent, and clean. These are all adjectives that describe Judge Wallace, and he exemplifies these terms by his life and the way he's lived. I said I met him in, a, in the early 60s as a young boy, and fast forward now to 1978, I find myself across the hall from then attorney Douglas A. Wallace in the First City Federal Building. And occasionally he would need a help executing a witness. Not that I would help him, uh, or executing a will. Um, not not that, that I would, <laughs> he, he needed that too, but not that I would uh, help him with, with the will, but I, I would be a witness. And every time I went there to um, do this, he would go through this process very methodically about how this was going to happen, what the reasons for it were, and, and the, the, the necessity of it. So this goes on for several different times, you know, five or six times, and about the fifth or sixth time I start thinking, this guy thinks I'm nuts. He doesn't get it. I mean, you know, I, I get this. So kick the can on down the road to 1985, partly because of Judge Wallace. I've gone to law school, come back, I'm admitted to the bar, and I'm a younger lawyer. And in those days, what would happen is, is some of us younger guys would be taken under the wings of some of the more seasoned attorneys, and there are, there are a bunch of them here this afternoon. And whether Judge Wallace wanted it or not, he got me. And he was my mentor, and he taught me. He taught me how to be a better lawyer. And as mentioned, he always saw the big picture. And that was something that young lawyers had, they tr had trouble with, and, and he was able to help me with that. And he would not tell me how to do something. He would always make it be my idea. So he instructed me a lot. And you have to remember back in those days, we didn't have computers. We didn't have cell phones. The closest thing, in fact, the first cell phone that I remember the judge having was about the size of a shoebox, and it weighed about 10 pounds. But we had a thing called a Selectric typewriter. And I don't know if any of you remember that or not, but that was like cutting edge technology. And if you had a selectric typewriter, you were, you were tall cotton. Guess what? Judge Wallace had two of them. <laughs> His forms were highly sought after, and everybody was trying to get them. I still use some of them today. So as luck would have it, shortly thereafter, my wife and I ended up at a social function with the Wallaces. And we're sitting at a table with them. And as my wife and Marsha started to talk, they immediately became great friends, and they still are to this day. So started our social life. So we get invited to the Wallaces for dinner. Now think about it. Here sits this, this man that's always impeccably dressed, 
never a hair out of place, and the only way I've ever seen him is dressed like he is today. And I'm thinking, how am I going to dress to go to this man's house? So I do the best I can. I ring the doorbell, and guess what? Doug comes to the door, Hawaiian shirt, short pants, and flip-flops. I said, okay, I'm going to get along with this guy. So as it worked out, we became friends. We, we started doing things together, and I found myself in a situation some years later where I was possibly going to need the services of someone like Judge Wallace that could write an appellate brief. And without provocation, without request, without being asked, Judge Wallace, as a sole practitioner, cleared his calendar, closed down his office, followed me halfway across the state, sat through jury selection and one side of a jury trial that fortunately ended in a directed verdict, but he was there for me. And that's what friends are. Now, if you look at Judge Wallace, you might think, he doesn't care to eat. But I'm going to tell you, the guy eats like a horse. His wife, Marcia, is probably one of the premier cooks in Manatee County, if not the state. And I guarantee if I lived at their house, I'd be three times as large as I am. If you ever have the opportunity to go to the Wallaces for any kind of a function, show up. Otherwise, you'll, you'll kick yourself. Now, in addition to eating, the judge is quite the dancer, and he fancies himself as one that can cut the rug. However, he does need to work on his dips. <laughs> judge Wallace likes music. He likes rock and roll. Not so much the country. Classical music. And he likes movies. He's quite, he's quite uh, scary, really, about the movies because he can quote lines that makes you think, how did he know that? And that's where he got the name Brainiac. He has a, an audio system that is quite impressive, and if you ever have the opportunity to hear it, you want to. In addition to that, Judge Wallace is an animal lover. Um, some years ago, I found myself the foster parent of a beautiful black lab. I had a chocolate lab at the time, and I really didn't need two dogs. And the Wallaces happened to be at our house having dinner, and I mentioned to them I had this dog, and they didn't act like they had any interest in it at all. So I took this dog into our backyard. We have a large backyard, and I sat him, and he's, he was very, very obedient. And I opened up this picture window, and it was love at first sight. The Wallaces were hooked. From that moment on, Jake lived a charmed life. He had his own place to sleep, and I think it was in the bed with the Wallaces. <laughs> he had his own eating station. He had his own ladder to get in and out of the pool. And the only time from that point on that he was ever in the garage was when he left the Wallaces' house to get in one of their cars to go someplace. Judge Wallace, I know the bar appreciates your service, your dedication, your passion, and your professionalism, and all the help you've given us all over the years. Judge, I want to thank you personally for being my mentor, my teacher, my instructor. But Doug, most of all, thank you for being my friend. I give you congratulations on your retirement, and I hope that you're going to hang around and we're going to see you a lot more. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Judge Scott Brownell. If I can stick to three minutes. Um, this was prepared not knowing that the entire Second District Court of Appeal, including everybody that works in the building, will be here. So I've got some questions to ask them. You already know these things, so I don't want to hear from you, okay? It's not personal, but okay. All right. This is for the members of the bar of Manatee County. This is a thank you to Doug Wallace. Um, we thank someone who is retiring for dedication, for uh, service to the state, encouraging and helping build and strengthen the judicial system. That's what we're doing here. And I promised um, Judge Smith, Gilbert Smith, that I'd stick to three minutes. And so this is about thanking him. Well, you know, if you haven't met him or you just barely know him, it's hard to do. Um, saying thank you to somebody is not the same as that warm, gushy thank you. And so I'm going to help you because you're going to see him and you're going to shake his hand at the end of the 
dinner if you get through the line, and you're going to want to look, you know, like you know what you're doing. And so I think it would help you to know a little bit about him that would give you that sense of knowledge. And there are actually two things that will do that. At the end of this, when I turn over and I look at Doug and say, Doug, thank you, I'll have a smile on my face, and when we're done, you'll know exactly why, and then you can copy that, and he'll think you're sincere. <laughs> All right, I need a little information first. How many of you, not counting the second district, please, and not counting Larry, how many of you have had more than, say, a 12-minute conversation with Doug Wallace? Just raise your hand. Not, not you guys, geez, no. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay. How many of you have been at a party with Judge Wallace where alcohol was served? One, two, three, four, okay, five. Five of you probably know this. Um, how many of you have heard him sing at a party? <laughs> yeah, the, they're ringers. All right, fact number one to help you. He does a fantastic Mick Jagger singing Little Red Rooster. Fantastic Little Red Rooster, okay? So that's the number one thing to remember. Second thing to remember, I looked this up in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, droll. Droll is having a humorous or whimsical quality, also referred to as an odd or amusing quality, chucklesome. That's droll. I'm coming back to that in a minute. Okay? Droll people do not tell jokes. They are funny, but they do not tell funny jokes. They are subtly hilarious. Am I ringing any bells with you guys? Yeah, okay. All right, how many of you remember from your college days or from your kids' college days what the term safety school was? You remember that? Raise your hand if you remember safety school. Uh, not as much. Okay, let me give you the definition because you need to know that before you, need, before you know this. Safety school. It's one where one's academic credentials exceed the school's range of the average first-year student, one to which you would be certainly admitted as a backup to your preferred or dream school. Not ring a bell? Okay, good. Doug went to, you heard where he went, went to Princeton and Yale. As you might imagine, both of those schools are considered dream schools all over America. Several years ago, at a party where there was alcohol served, I mentioned to Doug that a couple of Harvard graduates had been talking, and I mentioned that Doug Wallace had been to Yale, and this is what they said. Oh, Yale, that's our safety school. Okay, good, all right, good, you got it. Uh, I, I took that to mean chucklesome in an Ivy League way. And so I, I told that to Doug, and his face did not change. He looked right at me, and he said, Harvard men wash their hands before going to the bathroom. <laughs> Yale men wash them after. <laughs> that's droll. So, well, exactly. So when I say thank you, and you see a smile on my face, now you know why I'm smiling. Doug, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Judge Gilbert Smith. <sighs> Hello, everybody. And it's so great to see everybody here for uh, Judge Wallace. Um, he's loved by so many of us in the community, and he's done so much, he and his family, and we are going to be glad that he's going to have a lot more time on his hands to, to assist and volunteer around here. Now, you've heard a lot about Judge Wallace at this point, but, you know, I, we're all going to be reading his opinions for quite a long time. Some of us are going to be reading them a lot longer than others, such as myself, won't be reading them as much, but... Others of you, the young lawyers, will be reading these a long time, and so it, you've already heard some uh, different characteristics about, about Judge Wallace, and I want to tell you some more. You've heard he was raised in Bradenton, and he was raised by loving and caring parents. He has uh, three brothers, uh, one of them here, Don, and um, he all, they all grew up on Warner's Bayou, which is in northwest Bradenton, which at that time was a very peaceful and, and restful place and not too populated at the time. And his father, James Wallace, was an attorney who opened his practice in 1952 on Main Street 
and he remained there practicing until 2013. His father was a member of the greatest generation. And uh, as a member of the greatest generation, um, he raised his boys, all, th all four boys, to be very disciplined. And his father became a successful attorney, as I said here, and after law school, as you've already heard, uh, Judge Wallace um, got out of law school, came back and worked with his dad for quite a while, a few years before he opened his own practice. And you've also heard, we've talked about, um, Judge Morris brought this up, and, and I think some of the other speakers have brought it up, uh, Larry did, that Judge Wallace was a scout. And his parents loved him enough to put him in scouting, and he gravitated to it. And he, um, he, he enjoyed time in Troop 22, which is actually the same troop that presented the colors here today. Um, and he camped at Camp Flying Eagle, which a lot of you know where that is. He went to high adventure camps such as Philmont in Cimarron, New Mexico. And at a very young age, he earned the Eagle Scout Award, which is the highest award in scouting. And that made him, at that time, the first Eagle Scout of Troop 22, again, the troop that's with us today. And unbeknownst to him, he was a, quite an example. He set an example for all the boys in that troop, some of them that are here, and yours truly, um, myself. And that is why Judge Wallace is named in a book that was written by Colonel Red Dog Maynard on the history of scouting in Manti County. And Judge Wallace is listed in here as the first Eagle Scout of Troop 22. So I want to present this to you. And you're going to be getting a few other uh, gifts today. So at a very young age, Judge Wallace earned Eagle Scout and uh, but he was young enough to where he had other mountains to leap. So you've seen some interesting photographs here. And um, so those photographs, if you look at them carefully, you'll see that um, Judge Wallace went to Manti High School and he was a legendary. He was a scholar, he was an outstanding debater, he was on the student council and he was in a service club. But I wanna tell you where he excelled and I don't know if you've been able to identify him in these photographs. He played the saxophone. And uh, he was in the Manatee High Raisin Cane Dance Band. And look real close and you'll be able to see him playing the sax. And he was also in the Hurricane Marching Band. And so probably some of his colleagues here have uh, probably noticed him marching in the hallway sometime. That would, he would be taking himself back to the uh, times that he was in the hurricane marching band. And so, you've already been introduced to Marsha, but I just have to say this. That Judge Wallace in his entire career really has lived the American dream. And that is marrying his high school sweetheart, Marsha. And then raising two successful children and so it's really not surprising that many of us and many of you out there have such great affection for Judge Wallace. He's, he's loved in this community and we are gonna look forward to him being around here um, to uh, get involved. And uh, he's gonna have some time on his hands so I know a couple of bands <laughs> that he could um, audition for. One of them is a bluegrass band. I'm not sure that would work out. But, but there is a rock band with another judge here who I'm sure would um, welcome you. And I have one other gift for you. And this gift is from Troop 22. And it's a neckerchief. And uh, Judge Wallace? And maybe you can pass this on to Stone because Stone looks like he's on his way to becoming an Eagle Scout. So thank you again, Judge Wallace for your service. Well, thank you all. I'm really a little overwhelmed. I 
really hadn't expected anything like this. Um, um, being on this second district has been the highlight of my professional career. And I really, uh, when I think about how I got here, uh, I credit a lot to the Manatee County Bar Association because uh, as some of you may know, uh, most of us don't make it to the court on our first try. Um, I didn't get picked until the third time that my name went in. But every time that I called members of this bar up and asked you to send in letters first to the uh, nominating commission and then uh, after my name was sent in to the governor, uh, you did it. Uh, and that really was like six rounds of letters because there were three times that my name went in. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, a substantial part of my getting picked to be on the six, second district were your support. Uh, and I've never forgotten that. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the support because it was those letters that um, I think helped the nominating commission and the governor's office to see something in me that uh, uh, motivated them to take a chance on me to chance on uh, pointing me to the court. So I, I am still grateful for that, and I thank you again today. Um, I want to thank uh, particularly uh, Gilbert Smith for putting this event together. I know he must have gone to an awful lot of work to do this, and I, and I appreciate it. And I, I thank you, Paul, for everything you've done, and just again, thank the bar uh, generally. Um, I will say, um, again, as speaking to the bar, um, uh, Judge Casanueva is the, well, after I leave, will be the only judge on our court that uh, uh, lives south of the line between Pinellas and uh, Hillsborough County. And I don't know how much longer Judge Casanueva intends to stay, but can't be that long. Um, <laughs> and af after he leaves, uh, there wouldn't be anybody left on the court who's not from uh, Tampa or Pinellas or, or Pasco County. So uh, I, I urge you again to think about applying because I, I think it's important that we have some kind of geographical balance on the court and, and we have someone from the 12th Judicial Circuit, so that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, I want to thank uh, everyone who spoke, uh, Judge Morris, um, Larry Thomas, uh, Gilbert Smith, and Judge Brunell for your um, very kind and gracious remarks. I appreciate it. Uh, and I want to thank the uh, scouts from Troop 22 for, for being here and presenting the colors. I remember back to, to those days in scouting and uh, I, I really appreciate your coming out. Um, my, I want to thank my colleagues uh, for not only for being here but for all of their support and friendship over the years. I won't They've been introduced, so I won't name them again, but uh, uh, they've been part of the experience and part of the reason that um, every day when I got in the car uh, to drive up to Tampa or Lakeland, I always looked forward to going to work. It was never a chore. Uh, it was always a, a delight and um, a pleasure for me. And they were uh, great people to work with, and it's part of what made service on the court uh, so fulfilling uh, and fun. So thank you all. Uh, I appreciate all of the retired judges who came out. Um, I hadn't expected to see you, but uh, I'm really thrilled uh, to see you again, and, and appreciate your coming. Uh, I also, I don't, I don't think, um, I could, I think I have to mention 
uh, Jim Burkhold, who was uh, from this bar association, who practiced here for many years in Manatee County. Um, and when, of course, Jim left and went to work as clerk of the court. And when I finally got to the court, it was a thrill for me to uh, renew my friendship and acquaintance with Jim Burkhold. And we didn't formally have, now we have mentors for new judges. We, when I started, we didn't have mentors, but I think <coughs> Jim was my de facto mentor. And if I had a problem or something with uh, a case or, or other issues or how we did things at the court, uh, you could always talk to Jim and get wise counsel. Uh, and I think Jim, uh, more than anyone, made our court what it is and uh, gave it uh, the reputation of being a user-friendly court where you could call if you were a lawyer and even if you had a stupid question to ask uh, that you could get the answer to by reading the rules. Uh, <laughs> What a concept. Uh, Jim would always patiently uh, help you. And he helped, he did the same thing with pro se's. He took their calls. Uh, it was amazing the stuff he did, but uh, uh, he was a, a great guy and a great clerk. We all miss him a lot. Um, and Mary Beth, Mary Beth uh, has taken over and continued that tradition and done a fantastic job as clerk, so um, it's been great. And Joe Haynes, uh, Joe Haynes does a lot more than just open court. Uh, that's all you see, but uh, she handles all of our non-judicial related functions and uh, helps us do all the things that we uh, have to do. And I, I know her job a lot of the time is like herding cats, but she does a good job at it, and I, I'm appreciative to Joe for everything she's done. Uh, <clears throat> I want to mention my law clerks, uh, you know, to the extent that there's any glory uh, in what we do, and there's probably not much, um, but to the extent there's any glory, the judges get it, but uh, we couldn't do what we do without our <laughs> law clerks. Um, they don't get enough credit. Uh, they're all good lawyers. Uh, they're good writers and good editors. Uh, and uh, they, they make it possible for us to handle the caseload that we, we have and to get out opinions that hopefully look well written and, and professional. I, I got to mention my clerks that are here. Stephanie Zimmerman was my one of my first two law clerks, she's here. Um, Sherry Johannes worked for me for a long, long time. Uh, so did Robin Orr. Fortunately, they both found other places to go at the court. Uh, Joe Tompkins is here, he does a great job for me now. And Nicole Price, uh, they both found places to lie at the court, so I'm real happy about that. And Diana Evans, who didn't work for me long enough, but did a fantastic job while she was there. Uh, thanks to all of you. You don't get enough credit, and you did a great job for me, and I, I'm grateful. <laughs> and then there's, of course, the, the unsung judicial assistants uh, who also uh, do work that uh, makes it possible for us to function. And I, I had three, they were all great. Uh, Joanne Baker, I don't think is here today. But Jerry Thomas, who wasn't with me long enough. Uh, thanks for everything, uh, we miss you. We called her Tampa Jerry because we had a Jerry in Lakeland. And uh, <laughs> so Jerry was Tampa Jerry. Uh, and I, I thank you for, for everything you did. I wish you could have stayed with me longer. And uh, Barbara is my current, well, almost current JA. Uh, she's also found a place to like with Judge Rothstein Uicum. Uh Right now she's working for both of us and I, I think the state's paying her double. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Barbara's been great. Uh, and of course Jerry and, and Barbara had to 
cope with the, the conversion to computer uh, computer records and computer work and all of that, and they they all handled that very well. So uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to them. Um, um, my, my family was introduced. Um, I, I, I can't, of course, say enough about about them uh, for all of their support over the years. Um, and of course, I, I I I have to thank my wife Marcia, who has uh, supported me in everything. Um, I, I wouldn't be her with, here without her encouragement and and support uh, and she's been willing to make the sacrifices that it uh, required to take the job and to stay in the job uh, without complaint because she knew how much I, I enjoyed the work so thank you um, hadn't really prepared much to say but I think I've uh, said what I need to say. Um, it's, been, um, it's been a great ride, and I'm sorry to see it coming to an end, but uh, as they say, one door closes and another one opens, so I have to be ready for the next chapter. So thank you all. Thank you so much to all of the speakers who spoke so kindly about Judge Wallace and Judge Wallace for your remarks. Uh, we appreciate you so much here at the Manatee County Bar Association and we hope that um, your new life includes the Manatee County Bar and you join us for some luncheons and things like that. Um, you, the, the, the warm feelings and the hearts in this room are obvious to us all and, and you've been an inspiration to so many people. Um, I wish I had gotten to know you sooner. Uh, quite honestly. Uh, your greatest inspiration I would like to have to the podium now, Mrs. Wallace, very briefly. Um, as Judge Smith so um, well pointed out, this is as much a celebration of your partnership to Judge Wallace and your support and inspiration of him through the years. So uh, we'd just like to show our appreciation to you. Thank you, ma'am, for Thank being you. here today. And one last time, Judge Wallace, if you would join me, we have another gift uh, for you from the Manatee County Bar Association, and I'm asked by Judge Smith that you open this up. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I can't drink it. Would you put that on for us? <laughs> All right. <laughs> One quick picture, Your Honor. <laughs> Thanks to everyone uh, for coming today, especially the, the judges in the 12th Circuit and, and our uh, Second District Court of Appeals uh, Judiciary for coming down and joining us. We really, really appreciate it. It was a fantastic day. Um, we're going to adjourn the meeting. The next bar meeting is on October 25, 2017, and we hope that everyone has a, a safe journey home. Thank you.